calls it the core, legend calls it hell. Somewhere between the two lies man's imagination. It is man's blessing to explore his world, and his curse that he is never satisfied with what he finds. Astonishingly, even as we have probed the edge of our solar system, we have only penetrated our own planet's crust by a handful of miles. The Earth itself poses a formidable obstacle. What scientists call the Earth's core begins approximately 1,800 miles straight down and reaches a temperature of 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit at its molten nickel iron center. A scalding link to our cosmic creation. The center of the Earth is one of mankind's greatest untapped mysteries. Hypnotically enticing, eternally elusive. 130 years ago, Jules Verne fantasized that the center of the Earth was not an inferno, but rather a habitable place, a place that could be explored. And explore it he did, in 1864, with words. And now, we will explore it as well, with words and sounds, as we embark on a journey to the center of the Earth. Where you're going, you old coot. You're scaring my horses. Then what are they doing in my way? This is Konestrasse. They're horses. They have to walk in the street. You're a man. You do not. I'm crossing this boulevard, Herr Driver. Lengthwise, Herr Professor. My uncle, Professor Otto Lidenbrock, was no more mindful of his own safety than he was of the dinner hour. And arriving home, he was nearly late on both counts. I was waiting for him inside. Um, good afternoon, Professor. What's that supposed to mean? Uh, nothing. I, I mean, nothing. Professor Lidenbrock, you're late for supper. Supper this early, Martha? Early? It's half past six. Oh, it can't be. If I'm to run your house on a schedule, Professor, you have to hold to it. Your nephew Axel is here on time, and he had classes at the university. So did I, Martha, and I had to teach them. Nevertheless, dinner's ready. No time to eat it, Martha. I'll be in my study. Uh, uh, good afternoon, Uncle. And my nephew Axel will be in the study with with me. Come along, lad. I will. Shall I send your suppers up, Professor? Yes, please. There'll be no time for eating, Martha. But, Uncle... Upstairs, my boy. Into the study. Quickly now, my boy. I'll send up a tray if you change your stubborn mind. We will. We won't. Grabwin, is that you? Yes, Martha. Have I missed them? You have indeed, dear girl. Axel is in the professor's study with the professor. And me, with all his favorite things on the stove. He's a professor of geology, Martha, not manners. I'll go up after him. Besides, Axel came here to see me, not him. If you plan to knock on the professor's door, give me time to leave the house first. Oh, Martha, he growls a lot, but that's all. That's enough! He's your godfather, not mine. I told you, Martha, we'll have your supper when we are good and ready. Until then, leave us to our work. It's always work with you, Professor. It's your nephew Axel I want to see, not you. Robin, were you here? How did I miss you? Open the door and I'll explain. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Hello. 
Why, Professor... If you don't mind, my dear little Grauben, both Axel and I have a most important matter to discuss. Your minor case of puppy love will have to wait till later. Uh, but, I, but if yet more! No. Now, run along! Uh. Otto Lidenbrock was not a bad man, but he was well on the road to becoming an intolerable eccentric. He was professor at the university where he lectured on minerals and was famous for losing his temper once or twice during each class. His students awaited these outbursts and greeted them with impolite laughter. Yet Uncle Otto was a true scholar, combining the genius of the geologist with the eye of the mineralogist. His eye, abated by hammer, acid, and scales, allowed him to classify over 600 minerals, and his name was respected by scholars from Sir Humphrey Davy to Saint Clair de Ville. At age 50, he was a fair and youthful-looking man whose large eyes rolled behind huge glasses, and the glasses perched atop a long, thin nose that cut into the air ahead of him like a knife. He owned his house on Königstrasse, which was also home to his housekeeper Martha, myself, his nephew and reluctant laboratory assistant, and his 17-year-old goddaughter, Graben. Oh, Graben, the most lovely vision a young man could hope to love. A dear, sweet, and innocent. Axel, Axel, where has your mind wandered this time? Uh, it's right here, Professor. Make sure it stays here and not with my goddaughter. Uh, yes, sir. I want to show you something I just bought. Can you see what it is? It's a book. It's a priceless treasure that I found this morning while rummaging about in the old bookshop. Most splendid. Quite splendid. And what a binding. Does it open easily? Yes. And it stays open at any page you like. And look at the covers, which show no age, even after 700 years. 700 years? That's right, Axel. This work is the Heims Kringla of Snorro Turleson, the famous Icelandic writer of the 12th century. It is the chronicle of the Norwegian princes who ruled over Iceland. Splendid. Is the printing that clear? Printing? My boy, this is a handwritten manuscript. A runic manuscript. As my uncle handed me the book, a little incident occurred which changed my life forever. A dirty piece of parchment slipped out of the book and fell on the floor. An old document pressed there, perhaps since time immemorial. The professor's eyes widened with fire. What's this? He unfolded the parchment, which measured eight inches by twelve inches. It contained a few lines of unintelligible characters. Hmm. These are also runic letters, but written in a different hand than the book. What on earth do they mean? Here, Professor. What do you want, woman? Your soup is getting cold, and the meal is ready. Never mind the soup, never mind dinner, and never mind you if you can't leave us alone. But, Professor, Martha's dinner can't wait. Martha's dinner will wait. Martha will wait. Grauben will wait. And you, young Axel, you will wait. Well, now. Oh, 